Hey y'all, N4 H&H &H here, and you're looking at Ham Clock. Now this is the version that is running on my uh, Windows 10 computer using Ubuntu to uh, give me a Linux operating environment for this software. Uh, what I want you to see is my first opportunity to show you this. Look up there uh, where the time is to the right, and I'm going to zoom in. And there we go. Look at the version, it's in red, 3.01. So if you read uh, your operating manual for this software, you know that if you click, and I'm gonna click right there, on the version number, it says there's a new version available. So let me back out so you can see all that. And this is how you upgrade it. You click this button over here that says yes. That's it, that's all there is to it. It gave you, by the way, there was a list there of all the improvements. I didn't point that out, but you'll see that uh, as it does its thing. And uh, just, I'm going to let it play out in real time so you can see how long it takes or how literally how quick it is. All right, now it's it's over here on my other screen, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. It's restarting. And the reason it's over here on this screen is because this is the main screen for that computer. So all I'm going to do is uh, is go up here and drag it over to the to the monitor that I'm using as a second monitor. So the one in the middle there, the soft, that's for the FTDX10. So here we go. It's starting up. And, uh, you know, you have to give it some time to get itself all set up again. Um, there, it, there comes the map. Uh, well, well, the space weather is already up over here in the top right. I, I find that it's more beneficial to use space weather here than to know where all the beacons are because the beacons help the VOACAP and all that, you know, to deter, to predict propagation. Well, I don't care where the beacons are. I care about the solar flux index, which 100 or higher is great. Uh, 200 is awesome. 300 is incredible if, it, if I, I've never seen that, but uh, and then, you know, the X-ray, you want to see that in the A, B, or C range. You don't want to see M of any type, any number of M or X. And then, then the planetary K index, 1.3, not too bad. The lower that number is, the better. It could go up to 10. And the uh, the BZ, that's giving you an indication of aurora activity. Um, and now the DX cluster is waking up and, and loading. Now the VOA cap, see where the green dot is? That green dot right there, the VOA cap is, uh, oh, that is Algeria. No, hang, hang on, sorry, get it back on there. Uh, that is France, okay. So if you look over here, it's telling me that where the green dot is right now, I have a shot at making a contact, at least for the next hour. So for the next hour, I can work 30 meters, 40 meters, or 80 meters into France. The other bands are shut down. Green means I got better than a 66% chance of getting them, and that's usually, you know, usually you can get them. Uh, yellow means you got between a 33% chance and a 66% chance. A lot of times you'll get them. The red is less than a 33% chance. Look at that. It's interesting. It's going to go green on 30 meters. Green, yellow, yellow, green, and then straight to red. No, do not pass through yellow. <laughs> well, you don't get $200 either, right? Uh, and then back to green again, and then black for two hours. And then it'll come, make a comeback, and then it'll go to yellow. So again, it'll be between a 33 and a 66% chance of propagation. Red is less than 33%. Black is, yeah, you're probably not going to get them. Although, I, again, I've had some where it had just transitioned from red to black, and I was still able to make the contact. It's here. I showed it here on the channel when I was chasing those D expeditions back in November. So there you go. That was how easy it was to update it. And then let me just tell you what I've discovered so far. I've already updated the HF clock over here. Uh, you've seen those. You've seen those videos. This one here, and I have it set to show the maximum usable frequency map. And uh, everything seems to be running a little bit faster and smoother. So uh, read that list of of uh, improvements they made, and uh, you'll you know you'll get to see some some of the improvements are really cool. Uh, thing. So take a little time to read that. Now this one I haven't updated yet. There's the Innovata uh, ham clock that's running off the Innovata. I say Innovata. It's the ham clock running off the little Innovata Quadra. Let me, I'll pan down there so you can see that guy. There he is right there. All right. So I'll go ahead and do this one. Let you watch this one. So let me move the camera 
So you can see the screen. All right, there we go. So I'm uh, just going to use my little remote here that comes with the Innovata Quadra. And I'm going to move over there and simply, uh, there we go, right over the, get right over the version and then just hit your left click. And new version is available. Now we can see that list. Add support for USB uh, 12C bridge, add DX watch list, add DX times to gray line planning tool. Uh, VOACAP, that's the Voice of America coverage analysis program. Payne adds powers 550 and 500. See, it was just 110, 100, and 1,000 watts. So, you know, you can put in what power you're running, and then those, those green, yellow, and red blocks will indicate your chances of working that station at whatever power level. So here's a hint. If you put in 5 watts, you're not going to get a lot of green, more than, more than likely. If you put in a kilowatt, you're going to get a lot of green. Uh, so they've added now the ability to put in 550 and 500 watts. Allow correcting the time zone offsets by 15 or 30 minutes. Uh, you know, there's some, yeah, there's some, it's strange to me. Uh, if you know how this works, comment about it. I've noticed that some of the time, some of the, uh, you know, we're in the, there, there we go, it's, it's loaded now. So over here in the lower left, see that one's UTC plus nine. Sometimes I'll see UTC plus 7.5. What's that all about? You know what? I think we were reading that and I never did. No, I never did tell it to go ahead and update. So let me do that. Yeah, go ahead and update. So there's your update running. But yeah, so that UTC plus 7.5. So I guess there's some places where, you know, the time shift is not an even hour. I have to look into that and figure that out. But if you know the answer, put a comment in this video and tell me why we have some uh, areas of the world that are UTC plus 7.5 or things, you know, 6.5 or whatever. Now, it's taking a little bit longer to process on the Innovata. I guess you can see that. Now, of course, it's a smaller computer, probably running slower than the Windows 10 PC over here, the Dell. You know, the Dell's not a speed demon. I bought it just for ham radio, but some of y'all been around the channel while we wait here. Some of y'all been around the channel long enough. Uh, I've had some people make fun of me since so like, because I was using Windows uh, 7 Pro for a long time. I mean, I'm sorry, not 7, Windows XP Pro for a long time. In fact, up until last year. So I had people that would get on there, you know, instead of making a, a helpful or constructive remark, you know, about the video, what I talked about. No, they had to go Windows 7. I mean, when, uh, Windows XP, dude, you know, like making fun of me running XP. XP actually was able to do everything I wanted to do. But it got to the point, you guys probably, well, maybe you don't know this, but it got to the point where it was, of course, not not supported by Microsoft, but even they couldn't even get a browser to work reliably with it. So, you know, they pushed me to upgrade. So I just found a refurbished Dell and it's doing everything I need to do, but it does have Windows 10, not 11. Believe it or not, though, there were some issues with some of the ham radio programs running Windows 11. I'm sure they've been ironed out by now, but... Um, you know, there were some issues there in the beginning. Now, see this? Yeah, this is taking considerably longer than it did uh, over there running on Windows. Okay, so now, you know, it's, it's asking me if I want to set up or skip or you can just leave it alone. And um, boom, here it comes. And should be on the screen a little quicker than it has in the past. Uh, because it seems to be running a little bit smoother now than it has. In fact, I noticed that the, uh, you know, if you set up a, a pane, like I've got the one on the right up there. I use, I, on the other ones, I have soda up there for chasing summits on the air stations. But on this one up here on the top right, I have it set to show my local weather. So it's 41 degrees out there right now. But I've noticed in the past, like you could go in here, I'm gonna click, here's a bonus on this video. Right now I'm showing DE, that's me. DE is my location, weather. But I can say, you know what, let's do POTA and soda spots, and then I'll turn off my local weather and then click okay. 
little bonus on this video, huh? So uh, now it's showing Poda. Now I'm gonna let that play out for a minute because I want you to see what it'll do. Uh, and, and, and if you're curious, why does my map look like that? On this one, I chose to use this. Um, let me show you while we wait on the uh, thing to change over there. I've got it set for terrain. And then I've got it set to use this bottom option here under projection. The, uh, it's, it's strange spelling, um, but it's pronounced like uh, Movida or something like that. Movedi, Movida. Uh, but that's what's giving me that oval-shaped earth. So you can see the entire planet in one view. And it looks kind of cool, you know, as the darkness works its way around. You can see down on the South Pole there, it's not going to get much darkness. So it's kind of cool how that how that looks. Okay, so it's showing Poda. Oh, oh, it just switched. We missed it. Well, so uh, we'll watch it one more time. So right now it has switched over to Soda as the DX cluster builds, by the way. And, hmm, oh, the, the solar flux is showing over here, and I wanted VOA cap, so let me switch that out. The update must have done that. When I usually, you can click up there in the top middle. Oh, sorry. See what's on the screen there? Solar flux history. I got to get rid of that. Resume. I'm pressing resume. There we go. Now, I want to get up here and I want to, um, oh, well, okay, now it's changing to showing the weather wherever my green dot is. All right, see, it's on POTA now, and you missed it again, but let me tell you what it'll do. As If it's cycling between two, it'll start blinking just before it's going to switch. So I'll let it cycle one more time. Just keep an eye on that POTA uh, window up there on the far right. Top right, not far right, top right, because to the far right, I've got the space weather, which uh, I, like, I prefer to keep space weather up there in the top right one. But you'll see that start blinking before it switches. But let's see here. I should be seeing, if I pick somebody here, and I'm going to pick this soda station right here. Click on them. And it should move the green dot to wherever they are. And show their weather. It did. They're 54 degrees, 80 percent humidity, 30.18 inches barometer. You know, blah blah blah. You know. Uh, let me pick one that's further away. Um, maybe uh, you see it switch to Poda. Uh, let me pick here. Oh, VK. That'll be a good one down, down under. So you see now. The red line, that is my short path because I have it set in the menu to give me short path. And that's the short path down here to Australia. If I had a beam, I don't have a beam. But if I had a beam, that's where I would aim it. It tells me down the bottom left, I would aim it at uh, 253 degrees. It's 9,716 miles to that station. And uh, let's see here. It's oh, still not coming back to the VOA cap. See, this should be bringing me. There we go. All right, it's set on solar flux. Okay, well, so the update must have done that. So I'm going to uh, turn on. You, by the way, you can't turn that one off until you turn on something else. So I'm going to switch that over to VOA cap right down here at the bottom. And now I can turn off solar flux and hit OK. So the way you see this screen set up right now, this is what I find to be the most useful. Again, top right, space weather, space WX. The right pane, let it cycle between soda and poda if you chase those. In the middle there, the DX cluster. And then over on the left, the VOA cap. So now the VOA cap's telling me basically that I don't have much of a chance to get that station. And the only bands I might would even have a chance or 12, 15 to 17 meters. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing me do the update and give you a few more tips on how this thing works. Thanks for watching videos on my channel. Please hang around for 34 more seconds, roughly. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team members, what I call long haulers, who support my work here. Without them, you wouldn't be watching this video or any of the others. I would have had to quit a long time ago. But these are people who appreciate what I do. They like the videos. I've had some of them say, I've been watching your videos for a year. I've decided I should join and chip in. You know, I, I, you know, definitely, I would not be able to do it without those kind of people. 
And the ones who support me for a year or more, you can either, you know, you can join for a year right up front, but if you stay with me for over a year, um, they have access to some additional perks, but I also call them long haulers, long haulers. So those long haulers can receive my menu optimizations document for like, I'm up to six radios right now that I've created those four radios I feature on the channel. The list is on Patreon if you go there and look at it. And then also a couple of FT8 configuration documents um, that I've put together. You know, those long haulers have access to that. They'll receive that uh, document via email after they join for either uh, go ahead and pay for a year in advance or if they stay with me for over a year. All right, hey, again, thanks for watching the videos and 73 from N4 H&H.